1927. Um, I'm the writer and director, uh, although um, they're sort of loose terms because we're very much an ensemble and we collaborate a great deal. Um, yes, and our, our show is The Animals and Children Took to the Streets. I don't know if any of you have seen it or saw it last night. A few people, excellent. And, um, and we're, yeah, we're on for a, for a few days. Um, we, yeah. The, um, in, in looking at the show, you sort of described the, the troupe. I've seen it described a number of different ways, and it's this mixture of performance and live music, animation and film. Um, when I was looking at, at some of the, the previous things that were written up, and I think on your website previously, it was described as magical filmic theater. Um, and I'd, I'd love to hear you describe sort of what your work is and, and explain so what that format is. Um, yeah, magical filmic theatre is a good one, whoever came up with that. It's really difficult to describe what we do. Um, but it, yeah, it's a collaboration between a musician, uh, a writer and storytelling and animation and performance. And the thing that really um, floats our boat is the interaction between live performers and animation. and. Um, all the, the possibilities that that offers, really. Um, we find we can create this quite strange, otherworldly place on stage, and it's that that we're, we're really interested in. Um, and <clears throat> um, in some ways, we don't really acknowledge the fact that it's all animation with live performers. We just want to create this world, and that's just what it's like, and the audience kind of jumps on, on board with that. Um, and with this show in particular, we were quite inspired by graphic novels, and we're all quite into comic books. I really like Batman a lot. And um, so I think um, all of that fed into it, and we, we wanted it to be like this graphic novel that's, um, that's sort of come to life. Both with this show and, and the previous show, there's obviously there's, there's continuity and there's, there's differences between the two. Um, I was sort of interested in, in trying to understand where this, this art form or this format came from in terms of what, what were the origins? How did you arrive at this place as a sort of storytelling tool for the things that you were passionate about? It just sort of happened when Paul and I met. So um, I was um, doing performance poetry. There's a little performance poetry scene in London which happens in sort of back rooms of pubs. Um, there's an audience of about 10 and there's about 10, in fact there's more performers than there are audience for it. And, but it was actually a really good uh, platform for just trying out ideas. And so I'd write these weird little dark monologues uh, with music underneath and was using various visual elements. So I'd get my mate sat in the front row with an OHP projector, sort of projecting illustrations or old found photos or they would use slide projectors. It was all very ramshackle. Um, and then, but I really wanted to develop this sort of visual element of um, my work. And I'd worked a lot with OHP projectors before and sort of live animation, albeit very crude and basic. And then when I met Paul, uh, who was an illustrator and was just learning how to animate, um, we just started putting together what we both do, really. Um, and initially, the films would sort of play next to me, and I'd stand and deliver these weird deadpan monologues in a very sort of RP voice. It was all quite gothic. And Paul would make these little illustrations that would play next to us. Um, and we had a cult audience, small but cult <laughs> audience for what we were doing. And you know, the music was quite weird and the humor was quite strange. Um, and then um, we took a show to the Edinburgh Festival as part of this sort of literary cabaret. Um, and you know the tone of the piece was very dark and very strange, and it, it wasn't really that accessible. And you know, one day no one came, and I mean it's really it's very uh, humbling experience, <laughs> all ready to do your show, and there's just there's no one there. Um, and so and so that was also really demoralising actually. And um, we because we'd worked so hard on this show and we really liked it and there's so many elements of that the elements of that early work that's still in our work now but we thought do you know what we want an audience and we want to make it more accessible we went to see lots of shows um lots of clowning and um lots of music shows and lots of stuff that was in the spiegel tent there actually so very kind of cabaret stuff uh and uh and then we started adding more of a cabaret influence to our work and we met a piano player it's just a friend of my brother's, Lily, who's in the show now. And she'd never really performed on stage. 